Generic greetings and welcome to Science Insanity, a channel dedicated to bringing my love of science fiction and all its often hilarious meme-ridden brilliance to you, the viewer. Today, I wanted to talk about mechs that battle one another. Battle mechs, you might say. Specifically, how they go about beating each other into molten slag, and what that says about you. Today, we're covering the different battlefield roles and classifications that exist in the Battletech setting, what those roles say about you if you decide that that's how you want to play the game, and then I'm going to explain at the end why they're absolutely meaningless and hold no reflection to the actual lore and setting. Hooray! But first, before we jump into things, if you want to support Science and Sanity directly, then check out our Patreon. But if space shekels are in scarily short supply, then consider liking, subscribing, sharing, all that good stuff, since every little bit helps. And I love seeing the number go up! We recently crossed 15,000 subscribers. Fuck yeah. Let's go. Success, baby. Psy also has a Discord, so if you want to hang out with friendly turbo nerds, generally shoot the shit and experience all the wonderful memes and sillies that a community of nerds can share, then check that out as well. And without further ado, let's move on to the actual video. So, battle mech types. What a lot of people probably don't know unless you're actually into the tabletop or care significantly more about random uh, lore fodder and personalization than you really should, is that each battle mech actually has a role assigned to it that generally changes what it's supposed to do on the battlefield. These range from everything from ambushing to tactical support to long-range weapons, fire, and more. They're divided pretty clearly up, and generally it's not a super good division, like it's not very clean. Different battle mechs can fit into multiple different roles depending on how you squint at them, but for the most part, let's start off with what I consider to be the most random and asinine one of them all, and in alphabetical order, the Ambusher. This is functionally, um, how do I put this? They are fodder, meant to fire their weapons once, probably scare the living shit out of someone in a far more important vehicle, and then die gloriously because they can't run away. Ambushers tend to be relatively slow, relatively small, and usually extremely cheap. And most often, they're also equipped with short-range weapons. For the most part, ironically enough, Infantry actually fill this role in Battletech more than mechs do because, well, people can't really run around and fire lasers out of their arms like a giant three-story tall robot can, so they tend to live in all the destroyed buildings and fire missiles out at people that walk by. However, when it comes to mechs, you have things like the Irby, my least favorite mech. I hate it. You also have other things when it comes to tanks and vehicles, like the SRM carrier, which is just an absolute shitload of short-range missiles stacked on top of a truck that shoots you the moment you come around a corner, which is remarkably effective, but my issue with the Ambusher designation is it's remarkably ineffective and, how do I put this, wrong? Because for the most part, positioning is absolutely key for this, but the vast majority of Ambushers tend to be incredibly slow, see Urban Mech, and while they hit really hard, it's kind of a waste of a battle mech if you can use it once and then it gets overrun by something bigger, especially since most ambushers generally don't have the ability to outright kill something in a single shot. They'll need more than one, maybe two or three in order to actually get the job done, and if they're against really big targets like an assault mech, they're, they're not doing shit. They just die. Because let's be realistic, it doesn't matter how ambushy your cheap cost-effective mech is, if a dire wolf with 300 pulse lasers walks around the corner, you and everything in a like 3 kilometer radius behind you is now vaporized, so I guess your tactics don't really matter in the face of brute strength. It's... it's kind of mid. I don't really like it. In a lot of cases in the lore, these ambush mechs perform way above where they should. Like, an urban mech with an AC-20 is, is really not as scary as a lot of people think it is. Moving on, let's talk about the brawler. And this one... this one can mean literally anything, but for the most part, brawlers are mid-speed, mid-armor units that engage targets at well, pretty much any range is adequate. They might have a few small long-range missile launchers, they might have some short-range missiles, they could have autocannons or lasers or even some support weapons like a TAG or a NARC, which are essentially guidance systems for other artillery and missiles behind the lines. They're designed to wade into the thick of combat and just fire their weapons at anything that moves and generally put down as much fire as they can while staying reasonably survivable themselves. This is where a lot of the heavier mediums and 
and lighter heavy mechs will fall. Generally, this is where you've got your quick draws, this is where you've got your centurions, this is where you've got your griffins. I would even argue that there are some light mechs that fit into this role. You've got stuff like the Jenner or the Wolfhound, which, if you really press them, can absolutely fill the same battlefield conditions because they've got a lot of armor and they've got a shitload of weapons stacked onto them. But like I was saying earlier, it's so broad and so generic that reasonably you could fit almost any mech into this role if you tweak its build a little bit to function at almost any range. And if you squint your eyes, you can literally look at any single mech in the game and put it into this category. So it's one of those means nothing things. If you build your mechs and you set everything up as a quote unquote brawler build, I mean, it, it, it's it's a mech mech. You, you're, you're playing Battletech. Congratulations. You are the generic Wonderbread player. Moving on from that is Juggernauts. Now, this is probably the only one that I can look at and say with absolute confidence, it has a specific defined type of mech that actually fits into it. And for the most part, that's extremely heavy, heavy mechs or assault mechs, which are just slabbed to the nines with absolute buildings worth of armor and enough guns to make Texas blush. And then their entire job is to move forward and not die while making everything in front of them unalive. That is pretty much the entire role of it. This is where you'd fit stuff like the King Crab, this is where you'd fit stuff like the Atlas, this is where I think you would put stuff like the Dire Wolf, because just Jesus Christ, the amount of weapons that thing has and the amount of survivability it's got. This is where you'd put stuff like, I guess, the Fafnir as well, but for the most part, the big chunky mech like this, it's more focused around long range firepower with its big auto cannons or its Gauss rifles. So for the most part, yeah, giant chunky slabs. This is the kind of mech that a lot of people basically play because it's it's funny. Let's just be real. It's fucking hilarious. You have this absolute living bunker of a mech and you're just walking it directly across the battlefield without a care in the world. If you're the kind of player that loves using these specific mechs or this specific playstyle, or you fit all of the stuff into it, you're a Giga Chad. That's all I'm gonna say. It's hilarious. Normally it's not super effective because you'll get picked apart at long range, but it's really funny and I respect the fact that your role playing is the Terminator. After that one is what I would consider to be, again, generally more specific, but it's still pretty up in the air, and that is stuff like missile boats. I hate them. You are scum. <laughs> You are the bottom of the barrel if you are playing these kinds of mechs, and I hate you. I will not apologize for that. Getting spammed to death by LRMs is the most aggravating experience in the entire universe. It doesn't matter if you're playing Mech Warrior Online, Mech Warrior 5, Battletech, Rogue Tech, Tabletop, it literally doesn't matter. Being murdered by a million HIMARS missiles from the other side of the planet is arguably the least fun experience you can actually have. To kind of do it backwards, missile boats are exactly what they sound like. They are essentially platforms that are equipped for virtually nothing but long range or short range missile fire. They often use lock on weapons, so once you've acquired a target, you don't need to aim, the weapon does the thinking for you. And they usually have only a few piddly backup weapons like a single laser or a few machine guns, or if you're really lucky, maybe you'll get two or three medium lasers as your actual close range and medium range offensive weapons. If these things get countered by a light mech getting beside or behind them, they just die. They basically serve as fire support and artillery. That's their role. They're not really meant to be actual battle mechs because they're not battling other enemies. They're they're letting their allies do that and like I said, using tags and narcs to mark targets and then obliterate them from orbit with a missile strike. So I don't like these mechs. I find them very annoying. The only benefit, I guess, from a lore perspective is that it's, it's usually extremely obvious when something fits into this category because it has colossal fuck off missile racks taped to its back. And ironically enough, immediately after that, we are going to talk about the hard counter, which is the scout. And this is something that I just... I, I, I love this designation. There are a number of mechs that fit into it absolutely perfectly. The Raven is an amazing example. Electronic countermeasures, fast, it's often got stealth systems, it's got a few heavy hitting or decent weapons, it often carries uh, targeting and force amplification tools, like those aforementioned electronic warfare stuff, or like missile lock assistance. They're amazing at slipping behind the lines. And then you've got stuff like the Ost Scout, which 
is literally just a glorified sensor beacon. It's got a tiny piddly ass laser, it's not particularly fast for its size, and it waves its arms around where the sensors are in order to actually figure out where stuff is. It's just terrible, terrible, terrible. And it really depends on what mech you're looking at and how they're used. There are also other light mechs, which are technically scouts, but you would almost never see them used like that. And the actual dedicated scouts are usually pretty rare. And when I've seen people play them, they, they don't they, they don't really play them like scouts. They play them as backstab hunting little shitlords. So overall, scouts are extremely flexible. They're generally very light mechs, and you can usually figure out which is which because, I mean... If it's like 20 to 30 tons, it's probably a scout, and then you just leave it at that. Like I mentioned, though, if you do this, you're probably a role player. Like, you're just enjoying the game. You're building a lore-accurate lance, and I can respect that. It's fun. It's cool. You guys get a pass. It's neat. Overall, the classification's kind of nebulous, kind of pointless. Moving up from that, we have skirmishers. I've complained about some of them, like the brawler just being the every mech every- This is absolutely impossible. This is a meme of a classification. Literally every single mech can fit into this category by technicality. As long as your mech is fast enough to get into combat, do a little bit of fighting, and then get out of combat, it is by definition a skirmisher. They are fast enough, maneuverable enough, adequately armored enough, and armed enough for their tonnage that they're able to get in, do damage, soak damage, help push the front line, and get out before anything is overly committed, before they get outmaneuvered, before the enemy can react, before they take too much damage, etc. They perform best at close to medium range, and they like to use their speed to flank heavier units, or to attack where it's not expected. The literal quote that's sitting here in front of me is that they are fast enough to outrun anything they can't outshoot. It's like the battle cruisers from World War I, World War II era. However, the problem is, it's literally everything. It's literally every mech that you could possibly build. And if you're playing one of the different versions of Battletech, like the video games or whatever, or more homebrewed versions of tabletop, where you can just go absolutely insane with mech customization, you can turn any singular mech into a skirmisher. This category means virtually nothing. Even the mechs that they put in here are just not particularly unique. Like, the Victor, the Wolverine, the Grasshopper, even the Griffin fits in here. Like, none of those mechs specifically fit skirmishing. They can do almost anything if they have the right loadout for it, so this combat role is entirely pointless. You can just move it to any mech you need it to. And on from that, we have the LRM boats, cooler older cousin, and one that I actually do really respect and I think is a little bit more specific. The sniper. This is fundamentally different from the missile boat, because while the missile boat is a shitlord that's hiding behind his teammates and probably some trees and some buildings and on the other side of a hill on another continent with an entire ammo train behind him specifically dedicated to feeding more missiles directly into the launchers, the sniper is an actual long-range chad normally equipped with projectile energy weapons like a particle cannon, or they're using some good old-fashioned kinetic fuck you in the form of a gauss rifle or an auto cannon or some kind of rifle, anything like that, the sniper is generally going to be sitting at very long range as direct fire support. And they're actually in the battle. You can see them, you can shoot them, you can detect them, because they have to see you to shoot back. They are direct fire weapons. This is where stuff, in my opinion at least, like the Thunderbolt, the Marauder, you have certain stuff, even I guess like the Timberwolf if you want to call it that, depending on the loadout it's got. But also stuff like the Rifleman or the Jaeger mech and stuff like that exist as snipers. I really like this class because it's, well, extremely self-descriptive. It's usually smaller or very high-velocity long-range weapons. They sit on the back, usually at elevated ground, so the whole world can see them kicking ass and they have bonuses from... If you're the kind of player that uses sniper builds, or you're just generally a huge fan of picking the enemy off at long range, I still think it's a little bit annoying because not being able to get into range and fight can always be incredibly unfun for the other player, but I can respect it more because at the end of the day, usually these builds are pretty cool. You get to watch a whole bunch of autocannon or energy weapon fire, and you're not a coward hiding behind a mountain. So at the end of the day, you guys are pretty chill, you're good at tactics, you're using your weapons and the range advantage that you've been given to the best ability. Nice job, guys. 
And the last but not least official category is the Striker. And this one, similar to the LRM boat and stuff like that, actually has a relatively inconcrete definition and explanation. These are mechs that are very fast, extremely heavily armed, and have no armor. They are basically glass cannons. They have a million lasers, tons of missiles, absolutely shitloads of weapons, but they die if so much of a stiff breeze clips them. This is stuff like I mentioned the Jenner before, but realistically the Jenner fits here. It's remarkably heavily armed for a light mech. You've got stuff like the Commando, you've got stuff like the Piranha, you've got even some medium mechs, I would say. Because generally the only requirement is that you've got a ton of guns, you're pretty quick, and you have absolutely dick in terms of protection. The role of this is also a little bit different from skirmishers. Essentially these guys are a mix of skirmishing and ambushing. They're designed to move really quickly once battle starts to exploit weaknesses or opportunities in the enemy's battle lines. Let's say that one unit of mechs gets hammered and they're forced to pull back a little bit opening a hole in the line. You'd get a whole bunch of strikers that would rush through to either slaughter that wounded lance of mechs or to turn around and flank the enemies somewhere else. That's kind of the role that they fit. And for the most part, this is super fast paced, ultra aggressive gameplay. I respect this. If you're the kind of person that likes these mechs, you have balls of steel. I respect your choices. You're the kind of person that's gonna go out there and sword fight the enemy to death and punch their teeth in. The entire time you're doing it basically butt naked. I love this, I think it's hilarious. You are awesome if you do this. And now, at the end, I'm going to explain why everything I just covered is completely garbage, because realistically none of these classifications mean anything. My favorite example of this is the Timberwolf. What in the name of God is this mech? Is it a sniper? Most often, Timberwolves have large lasers, extended range, so they can poke you from absolutely ridiculous distances. Sometimes they have particle cannons. It's extremely common for them to have colossal missile racks on the back. In fact, it looks almost like a catapult, which is a dedicated missile boat. How do you really define this? It has some of the heaviest missile armament that most mechs will carry, 40 long range missiles, but it's also got an absolute shitload of armor, it's relatively fast, and it's got lots of long range weapons. So where does it fit into? Is it a missile boat? Is it a sniper? Is it a juggernaut? Because Timberwolves are famous from leading from the front and honestly murdering things in the head of an assault, so where do you put it? And again, we also have some inner sphere mechs which don't really fit. Where do you put the Griffin? Some versions of the Griffin are absolutely loaded with jump jets, SRMs, and medium lasers, and are super fast, meaning they can flank the enemy, do an absolutely ridiculous amount of damage, skirmish, murder people, fleet, like, they fit in so many different roles because that mech is so flexible. What about something like a Centurion? Would you call that a Juggernaut, even though it's a medium mech? And with its shielded arm, it can soak way more damage than even a lot of heavy mechs can, assuming the pilot's competent. Plus, its weapons are insane. A lot of Centurions will carry Gauss Rifles or AC-20s, which are stonkin' big artillery cannons. They'll carry missiles and lasers, and they're really, really good at brawling and pushing in as a heavy medium mech. Like, where do you classify it? If you really look at most of the mechs in the setting, there are very few that actually have a defined specific role. For the most part, it changes drastically depending on what weapons they have, how you're using them, what the doctrine is, or hell, even just what you want to use them for. Like, maybe you decide it would be funny to load high explosive shells into your Centurion's AC-20, aim that fucker at 45 degree angles, and start lobbing artillery shells over a mountain. Are you now on the same scumbag level as a missile boat? Who knows? So overall, one of Psy's patrons wanted this video to talk about this kind of stuff, to go over what they do and how they do and what they work and all of that stuff, but for the most part, it's... my experience is that mechs are what they are. If it's meant to have a lot of armor and weapons and be heavy, that's normally what it is, but they don't fit into any preconceived role because they're usually so customizable, they're usually pretty flexible, that they can do a lot. Assault mechs will usually assault things, heavy mechs are usually all-rounders with a few outliers here and there, and medium mechs are similarly usually all-rounders with a few outliers here and there, but slightly lighter, and light mechs are usually scouts and flanking, and that's really the only thing that's consistent throughout all of Battletech. Other than that, don't feel any need to play, build, or style your mechs like any of these categories would suggest. You can do anything you want. Hell, 
You can probably take a catapult and turn it into a brawling nightmare if you equip that thing with enough pulse lasers and short range missiles and watch as it just obliterates similar tonnage or lighter mechs. There's really nothing that you can't do in Battletech as long as your imagination's out there, and that's functionally where the battle's gonna end. I hope you enjoyed me going over the different categories of mechs in the game, or in the setting I guess I should say, what they do or what they're supposed to do, how they're set up, and then why it absolutely doesn't matter. And with that being said, the video is pretty much over. If you enjoyed it, thank you very much, with a special thanks to all of Size patrons. You guys are fantastic and I appreciate your support greatly, with a special thanks to all of the members at the $5 tier. Thank you to David G, the original Augie, 11 Bravo Crunchy, Terry Higgins, Pedro Munoz, David G, the other one, Silencer, Vox Apollyon, Phoenix, BT Legend, Electro Boy 11, Logan Maynard, Mickey, David Armand, Cree Dome, Robin Stop, It, Fenrir Striker, Tachi Tukane, He's Deb, Pixie, Virtus, Fabric 445, Anchovy Bob, Mini Crustacean, Charles the Snep, Polly, Eric Jones, and the new guy, Joseph Holiday. Thank you very much for your support. It's greatly appreciated. You guys are great. With that, the video is over. I hope you enjoyed it. Goodbye, because outros are hard.